When I talk about graphical differentiation, what I mean is how do we find a derivative from a graph? In previous sections, we've used the definition of a derivative to take a formula and come up with a formula for the derivative. But in this section, we're going to be looking at graphs and looking at slopes of tangent lines to help us figure out what the graph of the derivative is. To find the derivative graphically, we need to find the slope of the tangent line at selected points on the original function. We'll make a table of x values and put the slope corresponding to those tangent lines in the other column. Then we'll graph that table of values to get a graph of the derivative. So here's our first function. It's a parabola and it's not too hard to come up with a formula for this parabola but for the time being let's just pretend that we don't know what the formula is and we're gonna look at tangent lines to help us figure out what the derivative looks like. Here's my first tangent line. If I look at it carefully I can see that it's located at the point minus 2 minus 2. So with my tangent line on there I can go ahead and follow that tangent line and see if I can find a pair of points that will help me to find the rise over run on that red line. So if I start from the point minus 2 over 2, go over 1 and up 4, it looks like it intersects that grid. So what that means is the slope at that point is 4. Now I'll go over to the next point at minus 1, 1. If I look at that, and go over 1 and up 2. That means my slope there must be 2, so I'll put that in my table also. Now we'll move it over to x equals 0, and when I look at that, the tangent line there is horizontal, so what that tells me is that the slope there must be 0. So I'll go ahead and put that in my table also. So now let's look over at x equals 1, and when I move my tangent line there, now I see I have a negative slope. And from the point up here, I'd be going down 2 and over 1. So that would be a slope of negative 2 over 1 or negative 2. Now let's go to the last point down here at x equals 2. And now if I can find two points that intersect on the grid, like here and here, I'm going to be going down 4 and over 1, so that slope must be negative 4. So I filled out my table of values. These values are the slopes of my tangent lines, but they're also the value of the derivative because slope of a tangent line is what the derivative tells me. So let's go ahead and graph those. So I've put a point here at minus 2, 4, minus 1, 2, 0, 0, 1 minus 2, and 2, 4. And I think it'll leap out at you right away that a straight line will go through all of those points. So the graph of the function that I was looking at before, that parabola, and the derivative, that means, is a straight line. In fact, this is the line uh, minus 2x. And that's all there is to graphical differentiation, is picking lots of points, finding what the slopes of the tangent lines are, and then going ahead and graphing those values. So let's take a look at a little bit more complicated function. This is a cubic function. And here we're going to have a little bit tougher time because the points, the lines aren't going to be quite as nice as we saw before. So let's start at minus 3. And I've gone ahead and drawn my tangent line. And in previous examples, I've been able to go over 1 and up some amount, and I was right on the grid. Well, this time, when I go over 1, it's up almost 2, probably a little bit less than that. So let's say it's about 1.8. If that's the case, 1.8 over 1, that gives me a slope of 1.8. That may not be perfect, but I'm hoping that I've estimated that value close enough that I'm going to come pretty close to the actual value. Now I'll move over to the next point, that's at x equals minus 2, and now I'll figure out what the slope of the tangent line is there, and there's a number of ways I could do that. If I look at the point, if I go over 1, it looks like I'm going up, well, not quite a half, maybe 0.3, or I could say I go over 2, 
and maybe a little bit more than a half, maybe 0.6. So it's either 0.6 over 2 or 0.3 over 1, and those are both about 0.3. Move over a little bit more to x equals negative 1. Now in that one, if I go from here down and over, that looks like it's about a half and over 1. Or I could go down, uh, no, I don't know, over 2 and up about one about that but in either case it's a negative slope so it's going to be about negative 0.5 like I said we're always just estimating here this isn't going to be perfect now at zero this looks a little bit better I can go up one and left one slightly less than one but I'm just going to say it's about up one and over negative one so that's going to be a slope of negative one Let's move over to x equals 1. From this point, if I go to the left 1, I'm going up roughly about a half. So that's a slope of negative 1 half, or negative 0 0.5. When I'm at x equals 2, here I'm going over 1 and up ooh, about 0.3, or over 2 and up about 0.6. So that would, either way, would give me a slope of 0.3. And the last thing I'm going to do is at 3, that's over 1 and up about 1.8. You may have noticed that I didn't go to some real obvious points. For instance, right here. I could have found the slope right there. That's obviously a slope of 0. And I could have added that to my table also. Say at negative 1.8, I get a slope of 0. And at positive 1.8, it looks like the same thing. I'm going to choose to use those as verification tools for me in a moment. So now that I've got my points, let's go ahead and graph them. So at negative 3, about 1.8. Negative 2, about 0.3 negative 1, negative 0.5, at 0, about negative 1, at 1, about negative 0.5, 2, about 0.3, and at 3, about 1.8. Now that looks like a pretty easy pattern there, so let me go ahead and fill it in. It looks an awful lot like a parabola, and so there is my derivative graphically, and notice with the curve that I've put in here, at negative 1.8, or so, it's zero, verifying what I saw off of the previous graph, and the same thing over at 1.8. So in summary, what you're going to be wanting to do is pick lots of points. They may be at nice grid points here, or they may be at points like that negative 1.8, where I can obviously see that the slope was zero, or something else that's really easy to observe, like a slope of one or negative one. Plot lots of points. Look for a pattern, and then you go ahead and draw it in.